Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Kylie, my name's Mom to 3 and today I'm surrounded by books. Lots and lots and lots of books. Time to start prepping for our Ancient Egypt unit study block as part of our overall year spent on early times history. As you know, if you've been here before, we are using History Quest as our spine. And as we work through History Quest, I just want to expand on some of those bigger units that I can and spend a little bit more time with the kids, delving a little bit deeper into those topics. So we're getting ready to make a start on ancient Egypt. So it's time for me to pull all my books off my bookshelf, sort through what we will use and what we won't use, pull out my unit study overview planning sheet, and I thought I'd take you guys along for the journey. If you'd like a copy of this one, just stay to the end and I will let you know how you can get yourself a free copy of this simple unit study planning sheet. Before I start, and you will see that I do have a lot of resources uh, covering the topic of ancient Egypt. In fact, I was pretty surprised myself as to how many I ended up pulling from the shelves. I don't want anyone to feel as though you need these resources in your home because you absolutely don't. Please remember, I have been homeschooling for 15 years. I'm not ashamed to admit in my early years, I had a problem with collecting resources. Um, and so I did collect an overabundance of books and other hands-on resources for us to use as part of our units. Granted, a lot of these are secondhand. Um, in my early years, I frequented secondhand book sales like you wouldn't believe. And that gave me the opportunity to build a really nice sized home library and not have to spend too much in the way of money doing so. But I really just want to reassure you that just because I've got these on my shelf, please don't feel that you need these. You really genuinely don't. You only need a couple of extra books at the most. And for the bulk of those, you'll be able to grab from your library. Okay, so let's get stuck in. I'll grab my overview sheet and we will start going through this pile and see what we're gonna use and what we may not use. Okay, so of course, obviously we're looking at ancient Egypt and my goal for this unit with my 12 year old is simply one of exploration and learning to understand ancient cultures more especially the Egyptians they made such a big impact on society so it's really just an opportunity for him to delve deeper learn about the ancient Egyptian culture probably focusing a little more in on their religious beliefs and how they the gods that they worshipped of course there's no study that revolves around ancient egypt that you simply can't cover mummification i believe that we're going to be mummifying an apple as part of history quest so we will look into that a little bit further so for goals Like all of these history unit studies, they're not a massive three month unit study. I'm really not sure whether he will write some kind of written report at the end. It will just be a case of seeing how we go as we progress through. With each unit, there will be some kind of him documenting something from the unit and what he has learned. How we pull that together? I'm not completely sure just yet. I often tend to let that part flow and just see how involved he is in the topic because I figure if he's, if he's not loving it, there's really not a lot of point in me pushing him into have to produce something at the end of the unit. So I let that play out a little bit um, and see how we're going before I make those decisions as to whether he will write a five paragraph essay or whether I will allow him to simply create a basic notebooking page and share some of the information that he learned on the unit. So I'll just let that play out and see how we go with that. Alrighty, so I'm going to skip books. We'll leave those and we'll come back to those in a minute. Documentaries. Actually, I do have one. I thought I had a couple more on the shelf, but I can't find them. So I'm not sure where they are, but I've got a good old DVD. Lucky we still have a DVD player. King Tut's Curse, and then for a bit of fun, a little movie, Prince of Egypt. So we will pop those on at some point through the unit study. 
Of course, when it comes to other documentaries, I will sit down and go through Curiosity Stream and Netflix and see what I can find over there. King Tut's Curse. In regards to field trips and excursions getting out and about in the community around the topic of ancient Egypt, going to be really hard here. So field trips are probably going to be zero for this particular unit study. It's just not one that unless you've got an amazing museum nearby or some type of archaeological site that you could possibly replicate somewhere. But for us, we'll have fun using the resources that we've got here at home. Okay, so there won't be any field trips. So in terms of hands-on activities, I know things will pop up as we go through this pile, but for now, I know that we're going to be mummifying an apple. We will complete some type of art and craft activity with hieroglyphs, and I'm quite sure that we'll have a look at, don't know how to pronounce these, cartouches, cartouche. Okay, so let's start going through this pile. I probably won't spend too much time on each book because there's a lot here and I don't want to keep you here for <laughs> hours on end. Okay, so learn about pyramids. This one's good because it's got lots of hands-on activities inside. I'll give you a quick flip. So this one will be great for actually finding a hands-on activity. I'm just going to have a quick flip through. And here's the dead giveaway that I bought this second hand. Put the second hand price sticker in it. So this is actually quite a good one. Pyramids in math. So uh, we might actually take a look at that as one of our hands-on activities. Ancient Egyptians and their neighbours. If you've seen some of my other videos, you know that I love these activity books. These are filled to the brim with loads and loads of hands-on activities. This one's not just Egypt, but let's have a quick look and see what I can find in here that we may be able to use as part of our unit study. So here we have to create an Egyptian pyramid out of sugar cubes. Or well, this one is taking a look at how they may have built some of their gardens. Of course, living in the desert as they did, I'm sure they needed some type of garden area. It gives you the full step-by-step -step instructions if you need that. How to make little trees. Or oh, then we've got clothing. Okay. You can make a girl's dress. I'm not sure how much my son will be into that kind of thing. This one could be fun. So hieroglyphic secret notes. And in fact, because we're doing history with a small group of friends, this might be a great hands-on activity we can all do together and send each other some secret notes. Okay. Seeker knowledge, the man who deciphered the hieroglyphs. I like this one because it's for, and this one came in all stuck on the packaging. This one I did buy brand new. Um, but the packaging wasn't sealed properly, so it is... But this one, as you can see, is a picture book more suited for older children. It will definitely make use of that. A Day in the Life of a Pharaoh. You Wouldn't Want to Be Cleopatra. These You Wouldn't Want to Be books are always pretty fun. Go through some of the, the not-so-nice parts. Uh, in a fun, comical way for the kids. And you wouldn't want to be a pyramid builder. No way. Could you imagine what that was like, building those pyramids? I have a National Geographic copy that um, has a section on King Tut. Oh, we have another one. You wouldn't want to be an Egyptian mummy. Uh, that one will be fun. Have you seen these Leap Through Time books? These are really good. Leap Through Time Pyramid. So they are basically a timeline book. And it depicts what the area may have looked like around that time. So here we have the year 2700 BC. And then we've got 200 years later, five years later, 10 years later. So it just shows how it may have progressed over time. But they're interesting books, a leap through time. There's a few of those available. 
eyewitness mummy. This one's probably not for every child. You would have to assess this one for your children. Another older children's picture book, Cleopatra, Queen of Egypt at the age of 18. Cleopatra's passion was to unite the world under Egyptian rule. Legendary leaders risked their kingdoms to win her heart and her epic life has inspired countless tales throughout history. A timeless story of love, war and ambition. This pictorial biography is sure to entertain and educate. This is another second hand book. As you can see, my spine is starting to fall apart on that one. This is The Secrets of the Sphinx, Mummies and Ancient Egypt. This one I think I can probably pass on to someone else. It's just a really brief overview style book, great for a younger. Peppy and the Secret Names. Prince, I'm not even going to pretend I can pronounce that one, has commanded a splendid tomb to be built for his final journey to the land of the dead. Pepe's father is to decorate it, but how can you paint the unimaginable? The lions of the horizon, the terrible gods of Horus, the hawk and Sebek the crocodile, and Murchiser the deadly winged cobra. Peppy decides to find real life models for his father, using his knowledge of secret names. So that is Peppy and the secret names. Can't go wrong with Osborne books. This is Osborne Activities, Egyptian Things to Make and Do. Again, I need to take a close look at this, but this might be one that is time for me to pass on to another family. Let's have a quick look and see if there is anything in here that I think will work well for us as a hand-on activity. I actually really like this Neferidi collage because it lends itself to a great hands-on activity for a wide variety of kids and kids of all ages because they can really make it their own. Even though it's relatively prescribed, it's not... So if you saw the beetle one in the beginning, it's the beetle. The most they can do with that is, you know, probably paint it in a few different colours. Whereas this, they can really make it their own, create her crown however they like. I like that one. This is great for a wide variety of ages. So we might actually consider that as, oh, and this is another nice one. So the pyramids at sunset. So a nice, simple silhouette, watercolor style painting. Nice and easy, but will always look great. Some canopic jars. A mummy, would be fun. Cracked wax tomb picture. That'd be another one, a nice good art activity as well. So there's actually some really good things in this. So that's the Egyptian Things to Make and Do by Osborne. The Big Book of Egypt. What was everyday life really like? Who are the most important gods? Now this one's huge. Got little, all the little lift the flaps. This will probably be the last time we use this one. It'll be definitely time to pass on. But it's a lovely interactive book. Nice and big. I have a feeling I just got this at one of those clearance style bookstores several years ago. There is Big Book of Egypt. We have Horrible Histories, The Awesome Egyptians. These novel type books, we've got Egyptian Princess, The Mummy Tomb Hunt, The Bronze Bow, Captain Fax and Egyptian Adventure. These will all just be left out. There won't be any requirement to read any of them. We may look at doing one as a read aloud, but we need to keep in mind that our main read aloud is History Quest. 
so I'm not completely certain whether these will actually get get to um, but we do have those if we feel that desire and we've just got some simple uh, Egyptian readers sightseers ancient Egypt this one includes a fold-out map of ancient Egypt Let's see if I can find that here we go that one's got a nice little fold-out map And then, of course, we have some DK readers. So we have Mummy Mysteries in Upper Intermediate. So just to show you the level of that. That's Mummy Mysteries. And I've got Level 4, Secret of the Mummies. So $2, I grabbed that one for, as you can see. So just keep an eye out. Op shops, secondhand book sales, library sales, any of those things are all great places to find secondhand books. Ah, this is fun. This is my fun with hieroglyphs stamp kit. So inside, I'm not going to pull it all out because they're going to go everywhere, but these are all stamps if you didn't want to have to do them all by hand. And then in the back, this is put together by the Metropolitan Museum of Art. And then attached to the back is a book about hieroglyphs. It gives you all the information about the hieroglyphic alphabet. So this is one that will definitely get used. Okay, so this is a box kit called Pharaoh. Discover the land of the pharaohs and the amazing is civilization of ancient Egypt. Inside this kit is a fun stick on scene plus more than 30 stickers to help you recreate the land of the Nile. A cartoon fact book all about life in ancient Egypt, a pharaoh mask and a giant mummy poster. Okay, I have had this a while. I don't know if we've actually even pulled it off the shelf. So we have our pharaoh mask. Oh, this is the scene with stickers that you can add to to recreate a scene. Book from the Pharaoh. Get inside the heads of ancient Egyptians and see what they have to say about fancy pharaohs, mighty monuments, and making mummies. If you thought they spent all day sunbathing on the banks of the Nile, You'd be wrong. Find out the shocking truth about ancient Egypt with these historical funny cartoons. We've got that. And I do love a poster. I have to admit, I do love having posters hanging. The Mummy Makers. So that is Pharaoh. I have had that a while. I will see if I can find a link for you. I can't make any guarantees on that one, but the Pharaoh. Always love Usborne books. So this is an Usborne Lift the Flat book, See Inside Ancient Egypt. So every page is filled with teeny tiny little informative Lift the Flap sections. We've got At the Temple, How the Rich Live. As you can see, each page has lots of them everywhere. All over the page. Great Pyramids, 5,000 year puzzle. Solving a mystery of ancient Egypt. So all of these picture books will go in our morning basket and we will sit and read them at our leisure. This one's got a lot to look at, see and explore inside. So that is the 5,000 year old puzzle. And we have the Scarab's Secret. Pharaoh's painters have just finished decorating his new temple. By special request of the Pharaoh, I have been painted too. There on the far wall, just below the man with the head of a jackal. That's me, Perry the scarab beetle, 
And this is the tale of how I came to be honoured. So I like that one because it will explore the scarab and why they're so important to, or why they were so important to the Egyptians. Like this one, the story of the Nile. This one's quite an interesting one as well. It's another timeline type book. Big one, so I'll try and show you. I'm going to take a journey along some 7,000 kilometres from the source of the Nile to the Mediterranean Sea. So we follow the Nile, but we look at different eras in time as we follow the Nile. So we're at the source and it is 1862 AD. Now we move through the world's biggest swamp, but we're looking at 62 AD. Slave City, 1840. And the Kingdom of the Gold, 50 AD. So that's a really interesting book. Okay, DK Action Pack. Absolutely no idea if this is still even going to be available. I'm relatively certain I've had this for quite some time, but let's have a look inside. Okay, so we have a scale model of the Great Pyramid. Have you all seen these? These fake book containers. I came up with the idea, I have just a few little bits and pieces of figurines and things that you'll see. And I kept misplacing them, I didn't know where to put them because all my Egyptian resources are all together in one section on the bookshelf. But what on earth do I do with all the little figurines? So I got one of these and now I keep them inside and it just slots into the bookshelf with all my books. Tip of the day, perfect for all those little hands-on bits and pieces that you might lose and might not want to, might have no idea where to keep them. Get yourself one of these fake books. So I'm thinking, maybe not. Here we go. Scale model of pyramids. And then we have the Sphinx. Now I do know that not all of these came in this pack. I know that I've collected bits and pieces over the years, although I can't actually remember where everything came from. I've also got some more bits and pieces here, a canopic jar and a mummy and those types of things. So I have had a couple, oh, sorry, I've had a couple of packs and I've just kept them all in there. So, but in this one, we've got the scale model of the Great Pyramid, the Pyramid and the Sphinx. And then we have another poster of the Nile. We have a board game, the Great Tomb Robbery board game and all the bits and pieces, a mummy flip book. Secret letter written in hieroglyphs. And then you've got your hieroglyph book. We've got some ancient files for the kids to look at. A hieroglyph decoding wheel. Different Egyptian cards. We've got a soldier, craftsman, scribe, courtier, priest. Some more information. And making your own model at Giza. Okay, so that's a great pack to explore and in fact this one I think would be really good if you weren't using a spine like something like this. I think that some kind of pack, like a hands-on pack like this, popped out and let the kids explore that, read a couple of books, see what comes up, what questions are asked and take the unit study from there. So if you can find something like this, uh, that would be a great way to start a unit study. So it's the DK Pyramid Action Pack. I do also have this little cardboard that came in another kit. Some of those bits and pieces were from out of that. It's the Slinky brand Ancient Pyramid. And it actually folds out for you to explore inside a pyramid further. So that is the Slinky brand. I'm not sure if that one's still around. And finally, we have the Mystic Egyptian Tomb Dig. Are you exhausted? <laughs> I'm exhausted looking at that. Um, so the, the bulk of those books are 
uh, exploratory picture book. So they will be left out inside our morning basket and we will use those pretty much every morning we'll read through some of those over the period of a couple of weeks that we're studying ancient Egypt. Then we've got our few hands-on activities and most of those art and craft type activities we will actually do with our co-op, our history co-op friends. And then of course we spend each morning watching documentaries. So this is where I'll come back to my documentary list. And as we work our way through, we will create some kind of notebooking pages and consider whether we want to write some kind of report around Egypt. Oh, don't forget the unit study overview planner. I have one with lines, one with outlines. So depending on your preference, so they all come together in that one free download. All you need to do is hop on over and join the YouTube homeschooling community Facebook group. So this is a, the idea of this Facebook group is to bring together YouTube creators and homeschoolers who enjoy watching YouTube into one place. Basically, the dream is that this will become like a virtual homeschooling conference every single day of the week. So hop on over, I'll pop a link in the description box down below, join that group, and you'll be able to download your own copy of the unit study overview planner. And so that's about it. Thank you so much if you stayed with me this whole way. I really appreciate that. That was a big one. As I said earlier, I had no idea I had that many books. Um, so it really is a good opportunity now that I've got them all off the shelf to sit and go through them properly. And at the end of this unit, I think I'll be able to get rid of a good quarter or more of my Egyptian books and bless another family with those. Thanks again for being here. Until next time, bye for now.